Hello, it's 2022 and Volumes Part 2 is finally here. Yes, it's been ages since I've uploaded. As you can see, it's not the normal place I do my tutorials, so we moved uh, recently and loads of other stuff going on, client work. Hoping now we can finally get a run in on some cool uploads in the coming weeks or months. No promises though, things change very quickly. So let's just get into this. Excited to share this with you. By the way, thank you for everyone who has subscribed so far. Channel hit over a thousand subscribers and it's still growing. You've been very patient. Let's go. Volumes part two. I've set up the scene. It's not going to be um, focused too much on aesthetic. We're just going to look really at technically at what you can do with volumes in different ways using different techniques. I've set this kind of scene, this kind of a jazz cafe club scene with this um, complex object because it's refractive and reflective. So let's see how we can integrate volumes into a scene like this. Let's say you have to make a smoky jazz room. Um, you know, we like to keep it pragmatic. Okay, cool. So let's get our redshift environment in here. We are now completely overexposed. So let's bring this down to 0 0.001. Okay, in volumes part one, we didn't really explore the fog here and what it does. So we know that attenuation is the essentially the intensity a volume coming from a light source phase diffuses the amount of attenuation from that light source but fog is a little bit different in how it acts it is essentially a volumetric light source without needing lights in the scene what i mean by that it doesn't use other lights let's have a play with it let's see how it works now to get the fog to work you need to actually uh, play with the settings, attenuation and phase. They work in tandem with one another. So let's bring this to 0.25. And we can see we're getting our emission here. And if we start to move our height slider up, you can now see what that's doing. Another interesting thing is if we untick transform and start to move this ground point, it's almost like the coordinates for where we can place the ground fog here if we were to put our ground normal to zero here put it to one here and our height over you can see this is this is kind of its own source of volumetric emission let bring this back to one to zero what is interesting and very powerful about using the fog here is you can start to mix and match colors if we were to bring this into a more purple bring up or hide a little bit um, and then start to play with our scattering maybe knock off a zero there not that many zeros let's go for a blue and bring this up to 0 0.005 you start to integrate another color into your lighting as you slide the attenuation to the left you attenuate more of your general scatter as you attenuate to the right you'll start to integrate more of your fog scatter so let's go 0.5 and point or just go one and you'll attend you'll get more of your fog emission here rather than your general scatter if we were to bring this up by one to 0.5 you'll get a good mix of both and then as you play with the phase you can kind of play with how the diffusion works between both it's a great way of using two elements you know mix and matching colors okay cool so we have our scattering here set to 0.02 our attenuation set to 0.1 maybe let's go five on that to get more of a mix um, and we have our height set to 38 if we were to bring our height down to zero we get more emission here um, and as we build our height up we get more spread and fall off of our uh, fog so let's take a snapshot of this and this is with our GI set to zero. And uh, let's put our GI to one, take a snapshot. Okay, cool. So this is the first one without any GI contribution. 
and the second and you can see a huge huge difference in how the lighting bounces which is really shows you how gi works because you get more kind of bounce and that the color and light and volume and fog are working in tandem cool so let's delete both of these and just delete this for now bring back in just for default settings our redshift environment bring this down to 0 0.01 fog tends to be um much more noisy material it doesn't just spread out flat like it's doing here so let's make a material that has more of a smoky fog like look to it how do you do that just create a redshift material open your material panels delete this um, create a new node look for your max on noise and plug it into volume uh, let's change our noise type to fire uh, our scale maybe to two and bring our low clip up a little bit and apply it to our redshift volume and now you can see what's happening this is where the rendering gets a little bit complicated and there's a little bit more computing for redshift to do it needs to calculate this breakup of fog against the background against reflections and um, it's a lot to take in so if we were to up that it's gonna get even even more complicated so for now let's just turn off that let's bring our low clip down a little bit a lot of that fog is being broken up a bit too much okay cool now let's add a light to our scene let's start with a spotlight and spotlights can be very powerful ways to contain your volumetric lighting to a particular spot so we're gonna have to bring our cone angle right down and we're gonna have to make sure we hit the actual glass here for now we're gonna take this off our noise i'm gonna bring the scatter 0 0.001 and for the sake of visuals we're going to just turn off our dome so we can see where our spotlight is okay very nice let's bring this down to eight okay cool okay cool we've changed our color of our spotlight to red and we bring our scattering up to one and there you go you can see that our spotlight is has this kind of volumetric effect um, and if we turn on our dome light we'll be overexposed but what you can do here is go into your details of your redshift dome light and put your volume to zero so you can now still have your volumes your dome light without overexposing your scene and let's go back into our material here and just kind of break this material up a little bit more um, maybe put down to 0.5 maybe let's try wavy turbulence okay cool i like this luca and um, we could see this kind of like this foggy smoky light being broken up into a volume and if we bring our scattering to two, we can even do it more, our phase back down to zero, um, which doesn't diffuse it as much. Maybe here we can diffuse it a little bit more. Bring our scattering back down to one. Play with our attenuation. So let's see, we can contain the volume here, phase to zero. So this is really cool. And now if we bring our GI to one, we'll just get a little bit more bounce and bring the intensity of our spotlight down ever so slightly. And maybe bring the angle of our cone up to 11. So you can really see 
kind of a more advanced technique of how you can make it look like there's medium and scatter and materials and particles that is breaking up the light. You have this glass object which adds a layer of complexity to it and because you're going to get all these reflections and uh, off this wooden surface. So let's take off our crop here. And so let's just have a quick look at our render settings because this is super, super slow. So we have our bucket quality on meeting, but the point of the whole point of it is just having that control. Turn off automatic sampling, take your light, bring that up to just 512 from the get go. Uh, bring your volumes up to 512. Bring your refraction up to 512 and your reflection up to 512. Let's snapshot that. Um, and that took 14 seconds. Let's up, bring our sample min down to two and our sample max up to 64. I have found lately with some of the newer updates of Redshift that there is a threshold that is wider now and it tends to be faster and we can already see we're at 10 seconds there it's quite nice so when we widen that gap let's see if we widen it too much by going 128 maybe we have widened it a bit too much here it's 1080 let's go multiply that by two so maybe 64 so yeah that's 1040 so i think 64 is optimal but let's try 32 oh let's try 32 and see how long that takes that's 10 11 let's snapshot that and let's bring our light up to 1024 and our volume up to 1024 our reflection down to 256. 752 and bring our threshold of sample max up to 64 again. Okay, cool. 10 seconds seems to be optimal here. 50, and that's our first one where we hadn't optimized our scene properly. So always better to optimize your scene, play with the ranges, play with your samples. You know, the more samples you have, you need to optimize them correctly. We haven't even touched our uh, global illumination. Let's have a quick play with that. Maybe bring this up to 64. Okay, eight seconds. I love when you add more samples. Sometimes with Redshift, it just goes, yeah, I'm faster. It is a complicated beast to optimize okay cool so we have this at eight seconds um, and we can see the most noise probably is on snapshot two uh, where we hadn't upped our samples and now our samples game is upped um, so cool okay i think we've explored volumetric lighting um as much as needed right now we might come back to it at a later stage i hope you enjoy part two i'm hoping to not leave it as long keep saying that let's see um you know we've just had a few life changes where i now have my own office so this might allow me to upload more videos in the long term um want to thank everyone again for subscribing hit the 1k mark um, hoping to grow the channel more this year i'm going to talk more about that in our next video which will be a vlog discussion style video where we're going to talk about a number of things design industry nfts the channel um and then we're gonna you know move on to more redshift tutorials maybe we're gonna go back to more after effects tutorials let me know in the comments below what do you like what have you been following more i know redshift is quite popular with this channel thank you for watching and goodbye